Miami is literally sinking, but an $8 billion mega project might just save it. Rising seas threaten the vibrant heartbeat of Florida, pushing one of America's most iconic cities towards disaster. But now, engineers and urban planners are racing against time with an unprecedented plan. A massive flood wall stretching miles and fortified with state-of-the-art flood defenses designed to protect Miami from catastrophic flooding. It's a daring gamble, one of the most ambitious urban projects ever undertaken in the US, and not everyone thinks it'll work. So how exactly can an $8 billion barrier protect an entire metropolis, and will it be enough to hold back nature's fury? In this video, we will find out this and much more. It all began in the late 1800s when swamplands and mangroves marked Miami's coast. It was the railroad magnate Henry Flagler who transformed it, driving rails through marshes, raising roads and draining wetlands, turning soft ground into the glittering ocean-facing city we know today. But that very land, while ideal for construction, remains unstable and porous, compromising Miami's resilience. Sea levels around Miami have climbed about 15 centimeters between 1985 and 2016, and is expected to rise another 15 centimeters in the next 15 years. That's not just statistics, it means the waterline keeps inching closer, literally threatening basements, roadways, and every level below our feet. The rise hasn't been steady, it's speeding up, and that acceleration shows in king tides flooding streets in downtown, Coral Gables, and Miami Beach. Sometimes before any rains even begin, tidal flooding now happens on about 10 to 55 days per year in some neighborhoods. The city now sits just two centimeters above mean sea level, amplifying even minor surges into serious emergencies. Salt water seeps into yards, corrodes pipes, disrupts gardens, and pushes seawater inland through storm drains. Worryingly, Miami's primary drinking water source, the Biscayne Aquifier, sits just below the city, and salt water is pushing in. Scientists estimate that over 1,200 square kilometers have already been intruded, threatening wells and forcing costly desalination or freshwater imports. Even as mitigation measures like canal salinity control structures are being built, some estimates show over 120,000 properties at risk, insurance premiums balloon, foundations rot, and public infrastructure strains under constant wet stress. It's ironic that the very transformation making Miami a global icon is exposing it to existential risk. The swamps that once gave way beneath Flagler's machines might now return in a way he could never have imagined. And if engineers are to protect this city, they must reckon with the nature of the ground and the relentless rise of the sea. Now picture Miami in 2060. Routine street flooding, shuttered beachfront cafes, skyrocketing premiums, and shuttered tax revenues. The financial toll could be unimaginable. Florida as a whole stands to lose roughly $619 billion in property value by 2100 if meaningful climate action remains stalled. For Miami-Dade alone, mere maintenance to keep current flood protections could cost $3.8 billion over the next 40 years. Yet this is just the cost of treading water. Failure to adapt more robustly and quickly could amplify these figures dramatically. By 2060, sea levels of up to 79 centimeters are projected in some scenarios. Coastal neighborhoods like South Beach could find their treasures literally underwater. The human side of the story is equally stark. Over the past five years, Florida has faced over $100 billion in climate-related disaster losses. Homeowner insurance, once affordable, is now skyrocketing, averaging plus 35%, sometimes hitting $1,900 per renewal. That doesn't just dent budgets, it can wreck lives. As premiums soar, families face impossible choices, repair, evacuate, or leave altogether. It's financial stress with very real social fractures. Public funds will have to backfill collapsing tax bases, threatening pensions, schools, fire and rescue, and healthcare. Emergency services run by channels, roads undermined by saltwater, and the Biscayne Aquifier contaminated by rising groundwater all become fiscal bullets loaded by climate inaction. So how much will it cost to salvage homes, families, and rhythms of life? Enter the Army Corps of Engineers and Alliance of Local Planners with a comprehensive coastal defense plan featuring flood walls, pumps, valves, and more. The original US Army Corps plan released in 2020 carried a roughly $4.6 billion price tag with floodgates and walls, pump stations, and building elevations. Since then, revised studies have doubled down, expanding assessments and examining hybrid gray-green solutions 
on a projected timeline of five years at an added $8.2 million expanded study, bringing total projected costs to six to eight billion dollars. Core to the plan are mile-long flood walls along the bayfront and hurricane-proof gates at key waterways, protecting against surges of up to three to four meters high. Those structures would be paired with dozens of newly installed tidal backflow prevention valves, stormwater pump stations, and reinforced canal walls. The city plans to add 93 pumps to the current network of 13, each pump costing tens to hundreds of millions, a strategic investment to drain water faster and lift sea levels higher. A cornerstone is Miami's Stormwater Master Plan, approved March 13, 2024, which identifies 25 priority flooding projects with modern modeling, sequencing phased upgrades, and integrating sea level projections into every design. This isn't reactive patchwork, it's a coordinated system. Coastal walls, smart pumps, elevated roads, reinforced canals, all timed to outpace rising tides. This multi-layered defense could shift Miami's future but only if bureaucratic gears, financing, and engineering combine flawlessly. The next hurdle is whether politics and funding can keep pace with the rising floodwaters. Securing the remaining funding requires convincing federal representatives, state leaders, and local governments to align. While FEMA recently pulled $150 million in South Florida flood grants, stirring regional anxiety, engineering complexities are equally daunting. Designing flood walls that can withstand storm surges while adapting to rising tides is no trivial task. Pumps alone may cost hundreds of millions, and choosing strategic locations matters. Should Miami install 50 pumps, 100, and where do they go? What about the maintenance of these costly systems in salty, humid environments? These questions hinder immediate execution. Then there's public resistance. Early core proposals sparked civil backlash. Residents feared losing water views, waterfront access, and local parks. Community groups demanded the integration of green infrastructure, mangrove buffers, berms, and living shorelines to soften the impact and preserve nature. The core ultimately agreed to redo studies, including environmental and social considerations, adding years to the timeline. Lastly, time. With a possible sea level rise of over 0.3 meters by 2060 and storm surges climbing higher, delays could make designed defenses outdated before completion. Each year of delay adds risk. Yet, despite the obstacles, Miami has a playbook. Aligned multi-agency collaboration, phased project construction, creative funding such as green bonds, community engagement, and adaptive engineering. The question is whether that playbook will translate into action before the tide overtakes it. Implementing this $8 billion plan goes far beyond holding back seawater. It offers a chance to reimagine Miami as a forward-looking, climate-resilient city. When streets are elevated and flood walls erected, it opens up opportunities for new public spaces, cooler microclimates, and restored ecosystems to flourish. Think of it this way. Every dollar put into climate-resilient infrastructure yields a remarkable return. According to UN and US research, investing $1 can save society $6 in disaster recovery costs, sometimes even $13 when factoring in broader economic benefits, such as preserving jobs and income during disasters. Specifically, a $10.8 billion investment to brace Miami against a Category 4 hurricane could prevent the loss of approximately 184,000 jobs, safeguard $26 billion in economic output, and protect $17 billion in resident income. This isn't far off theory. Miami's stormwater master plan identifies sites for multifunctional infrastructure, pumped parks that collect rainwater and double as green space, restored mangroves shielding coastlines while supporting biodiversity, and underground detention areas that ease drainage during storms. That means families could enjoy cooler, more walkable streets, while stormwater systems quietly and efficiently guard against flooding. Tourism also stands to benefit in a big way. Imagine waterfront parks with elevated promenades, resilient architecture, climate-smart hotels, and new beachfront attractions that signal a city that thrives despite rising seas. That reputation could draw visitors, investors, and international attention, turning adaptation into an asset. Beyond economics, this transformation offers hope. It's a story of adaptation, not surrender. Of creativity, not capitulation. Yet, these benefits won't materialize overnight. Green-gray hybrids will need careful design, multi-agency coordination, and continuous community engagement. Funding streams must align. Local bonds, federal grants, green loans, and private investment. And execution must be phased cleverly. Pilot green zones, 
upgrade core flood infrastructure, then scale outward. Miami can turn its challenge into an opportunity. This is not just about staying dry, it's about thriving decisively in a warming world. So what now? Miami and the Army Corps must finalize designs, secure funding, and begin phased construction. The Stormwater Master Plan will set priorities, starting with tidal valves, pump upgrades, and canal wall reinforcement. Federal support hinges on local advocacy, and elected officials must feel the pressure. Developers and insurers, facing rising losses, may finally step up. Engineering innovations like solar pumps, self-closing valves, and adaptable flood walls must work together as sea levels rise. Public outreach is vital. This can't be top-down. It needs community buy-in, with residents informed, involved, and empowered to lead local resilience from the ground up. By 2030, if the plan is on track, Miami could present the world with a living lab, a modern coastal city transforming adversity into opportunity. If it succeeds, it buys time, not eternity. But the time is now. In this climate-changing era, turning the tide is not optional. So do you think Miami can hold back the ocean? Or are we just buying time, not solving the problem? Share your opinion below. And if you found this eye-opening, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more real-world stories that matter.